Okay, now we're, we're gonna do some trig identities. And basically, all trig identities are is just, that's just you manipulating uh, some trig functions and trying to make them simple, trying to remove a radical, uh, you know, a number of things. Uh, it's basically, you're gonna get a bunch of junk and you're gonna try to make it, uh, you're gonna try and turn it into some simple junk. Okay, so the first thing we need to go over again is our Pythagorean identity. Okay, this is pretty much the only one I really kind of memorize um, because you can use it to get a lot of other things. Okay, and one of the one of the most common uh, things to do is to just uh, divide everything in here by one of the trig functions, and you can derive a whole new set of identities. So let's let's go ahead and just draw or divide sine squared theta through the whole thing, okay? Um, you know, it's an equation, so whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So, all right, we got that. Um, this simplifies the one. Co, um, cosine over sine is cotangent squared theta. And the reason that is, is because, think about this. Let me cross these squares out here now. That's pretty much what this became right there, okay? And that's actually another uh, just a handy way to simplify something. And this is cosecant squared theta, okay? So now we figured out what uh, cosecant uh, squared theta is. So if we want to do, we could get rid of uh, cosecant. And, no, and, and notice how if I subtract one from both sides, minus one, work with me, Notice how we get another guy right there, okay? So that's a pretty good one to kind of kind of go around, and we're we're gonna kind of use uh we're gonna use plenty of those again. Um, before we do though, let me just um let's uh, do this again, and we'll just kind of change it up a bit. Let's divide by cosine theta, cosine squared theta. Okay, well sine over cosine squared is tangent squared. Remember, you know, these squares, you know, it's actually kind of like that. So we got tangent squared plus one equals one over cosine squared theta is secant squared theta. Okay, so we got some of those. So let's um let's put up uh, I'm gonna look I'm gonna look over here at this thing and we're gonna come up with uh, something. Now, this is mainly just for practice, so. I'm sorry, let's make that a one. Okay, so it says, actually let me write, rewrite this. I don't wanna confuse anybody. Okay, so it says f of x is equal to x squared plus 1, and x is equal to tangent theta. Um, you know, we want to uh, kind of 86 the uh, radical is what we, what we want to do. So um, let's uh, go ahead and do that. So it's given that tangent is equal to x, so we can just go ahead and write tangent theta in for x, okay? And remember, it's all inside the radical. So we did that, okay. And let's uh, let's kind of make it a, a little neater. Um, this is going to be tangent squared theta plus one. Well, we just kind of derived, didn't we, that tangent squared uh, theta plus one is equal to secant squared theta. So that's the first thing I see. I see square root of secant squared theta. Now recall that if you take the square root of a square, it kind of cancels out. So that's the next thing we're going to do, except, oops, it's going to be the absolute value of secant, right? Because remember, um, 
we, we don't want any negative values in here. So if, if, if we ended up uh, taking like a negative times a positive um, value, um, we could end up with, we could end up in trouble. So it's, it's kind of implied, and there's a certain uh, part of the domain of secant that that'll happen at. But, but just right now, just kind of remember when you take the square root of something, um, always put, always put the, uh, the, the radical sign, right? Or the absolute value bars right there. Okay, so we did that. Okay. And let's see here. Um, next thing we'll do is Okay, we're just going to we're just going to add these together. And we want to keep our answer in terms of sine and cosine, our, our, our final answer, okay? So what are we going to do uh, really quick here? What, what are we going to do? This is, looks kind of wacky. First thing I want to do is get a common denominator, okay? So if I multiply this by sine theta, then that's going to give me um, a com or that's going to give me sine, cosine. So over here, I'm going to want to multiply by cosine theta. Okay, and then my new guy is going to look something like cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta over my common denominator, which is cosine theta sine theta. Okay. You see how I did that? The common denominator um, say is, is cosine theta, sine theta. So I just rewrote that right down there. And then I multiplied uh, both sides over here by sine. I got sine squared multiplied by cosine. Again, that gives me cosine squared. Okay. So it looks like, um, remember the uh, Pythagorean identity, that says that cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. So we can take this down to cosine, okay, and also the way I like to think about this is cosine theta times 1 over sine theta, right? Now it says to go ahead and leave everything in in terms of uh, sine or cosine. So let's see if we can't get any better than this. Let's see if we can't do a little better than, than these guys because this is actually equal to secant theta times cosecant theta. So let's see here. I'm not really seeing anything that jumps out at me. So let's go ahead and leave our answer as cosine theta multiplied by 1 over sine theta. Um, and either this one or this one is going to is going to give you your most uh, simplified term, okay? Uh, or expression. So, um, you know, we started out with with um, basically we started out with cotangent over tangent or or t I'm sorry. We basically started out with we could have simplified this and said cotangent theta plus tangent theta, and we found that that was pretty much the same thing as down right here, okay? And that's the goal. All we're trying to do is, uh, you know, go back and forth and kind of manipulate these things.